Hello, welcome to Cerulean Arts Gallery, uh, to today's tour and talk with artist Christine Stoughton in conjunction with her Cerulean Collective Exhibition on view October 11th through November 5th, 2023. Hello, Christine. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Okay. Looking so forward to our chat. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, spotlight Tina's camera. And uh, please tell us about your uh, your current show. Well, my current show you'll see is about a lot of um, different materials. It's a conglomeration of really exploring what is possible with different medium. I'm very interested in the materiality of what I work with, and that's usually what I start with. This piece is um, actually powdered graphite uh, applied to paper. And um, it, it's challenging to work with because it is powder. And so I experimented with many different ways of wetting the paper first, not wetting the paper first. Um, and this is, I used like a stencil and drop the powder in between and then moved it around and adhered it to the paper. So how did you, you know, learn all these different techniques? I just do them. <laughs> what was your I, background? Like what was your training in? Uh, well, I was trained as a sculptor uh, and a printmaker, a sculptor and a printmaker. Those were my primary focuses, but it, I went to Pennsylvania Academy, so studied everything as mm -hmm. we did, um, painting, sculpture, printmaking. And I do approach my work more as a sculptor, even the two-dimensional works, mm -hmm. um, because I, I build an image rather than have an idea and paint it or, you know, it's my thinking is not very, it's a lot about the materials. For example, this is um, a paper yarn. Uh, and then I did the background with uh, either graphite powder, ink, or pencil. And it's on mulberry paper, which is then adhered to cork and a wood panel. And I really do like work that is accessible. I like sort of something that feels spontaneous, uh, hence the um, the push pins. Mm. Well, it does it, give it, a down-to-earth quality. Yes, it makes it less precious. So are you concerned at all about like not having those things under glass or? I'm not. <laughs> I, I I think people, you know, are careful and I am not concerned. This is my new passion, which is frittage, uh, which is a very intimate way of working. Um, frittage means rubbing. Um, and I, I've been looking at it as a fine art form. Usually when we think about rubbing, we think about, you know, doing uh, rubbings of cemetery stones. But mm -hmm. it was developed by Max Ernst in the 1920s, and people have been exploring it as a fine art form. So you, this is... Yeah. This you put is, the paper over a surface and then... Yeah, uh -huh. and that was put over um, dry rose petal leaves. Mm -hmm. And I used, did it on um, tea bag paper. Huh, why and tea bag paper? I love the staining uh -huh. and also it's a very sensitive paper and it's also rather tough. So it looks very delicate, but there's a toughness to it because it has to withstand water and heat. Uh, and it is, it picks up the images quite delicately. It's a very intimate way of working for Taj's. When you think about it, it's it's quite it's an archive of something passing. Right. Hmm. Like an icon, a relic. So that, and that was a the traditional practice was to rub 
tombstone? So no, I mean, uh, initially it was uh, developed by Max Ernst who used it rubbing in his paintings and oh he, he would rub different surfaces. He introduced it. Hmm. This is a light field monotype done with a very um, special ink dispenser and it's on paper. So the monotype is uh, like a painting on a plate? Yes, it's a painting on a plate, which is then pressed onto paper. And you usually get one impression, hence the monotype? Well, this, you get one, but then you'll have ghost images. So that was uh, taking off the same plate as the ink disappeared. I see. And this is a negative of a monotype. <laughs> Where the ink had been removed, I had drawn these lines in, and then what was left was the white image, huh. and that's that's called Night Garden. And yeah. it's enhanced with oil pastel. Hmm. Your titles are very evocative. So do you are you do you have the concept in mind as you're making the piece, or does it come after, or how do you? Uh, the title usually comes after. Um, the title usually comes after, yes. And I do have a general concept, but the work starts more from the materials than, and that, <laughs> that is my assemblage. Uh -huh. It's called Awakening. Uh, the inspiration for that was a dream that I had. Um, and anytime I told, I don't tell a lot of people my dreams, but when I would relay this to people who knew me, they would say, oh, you've got to make an art piece of that. <laughs> so this is what came in my dream. It was a dream about Cinderella, but uh, she was posed as Degas' dancer. Hmm. And so that's the pose in the sculpture I made with paper clay there. And she has scissors and she's cut off her ball gown, which is around the <laughs> feet. Yes, I see that. And the um, the puff balls, which appear throughout this show, um, I think of it as associated with childhood and the magic of childhood and how we love running and blowing and them and making them disappear. So They're very ephemeral. Yes, very ephemeral. And I still love them. <laughs> <laughs> so the one on the left is a frittage. It's called Morning's Glory. But the teacher in me has a visual aid here. Oh, okay. Hang on one sec. Let me spotlight. Yes. Huh. So what are we looking at? What are we seeing here? That is a collagraph plate. And a collagraph plate is a texture that is glued down and sealed. And then it can be inked and printed. This is a lotus leaf that I dried and applied and, and turned into a collagraph plate. Mm -hmm. So, but instead of, I have printed this, I've worked with this plate for 20 years now, oh. but instead of printing it, I did a frittage of it and then enhanced it with drawing. Hmm. And those were made from the same um, stencil that I made for the original one we looked at. And this is just uh, repeating it and turning it into a firework, a cross between the puff balls and the fireworks. Uh -huh. Again, yeah. it's the powder graphite. It's interesting that the same form can have different meanings yes yes
And this is uh, an example of what paper is capable of. I like exploring the properties of paper. Um, so it can have different edges and it burns. So this was done as a frittage and then I scorched it and made drawn marks by the burning of the paper. And this was done this summer when the world was on fire and we were very aware of climate change and the trouble we're in uh, with our environment. And it just felt like I needed to address that because all my work does refer to nature. Uh, that is a theme that runs through most of my work and it seemed important to address that. It's... This is called our plant, but with an E in parentheses, so planet needs care. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the, the uh, piece on the left is a drawing on illustration board with different medium, ink and pencil and charcoal and applied with brush or uh, pen and ink. And it's of the beach, beach grasses that I see near my home in Cape Cod. So do you find the two places you live affect your art differently? Yes. Yes, I think they do. I, I'm i very influenced by my environment, whether I'm in the studio or outside in the by the ocean. Yes. So these are like scroll forms. Their scrolls. They are um, based on a woodcut. What's running through the, from the top to the bottom in all of them, although they're ink different colors, is a woodcut. And then the individual images are primarily different types of prints um, or handmade papers, embroidered papers applied and they represent the different seasons. So it's it's a large visual impact because they're six feet long, but when you get up, you hopefully people will take the time to discover a whole world. Yes, and they pull you in to very small, uh, delicate uh, vignettes within the larger yes uh, pr uh, print scroll and i did do these at, during the season in which they were happening mm -hmm. so it made me very sensitive to the colors and textures it's also a highly textured piece mm -hmm. so it felt proper to do it that way rather than you know, you had to space them out over the separate seasons? Well, that it kind of took me that long to do uh -huh. it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it took, they took a long time. Mm -hmm. They were definitely a uh, labor of love. So are you printing the woodcut? Is it uh, like on a press or hand printed? No, hand it's hand printed. Mm -hmm. The woodcut is hand printed. And is it one? continuous piece? Yes, it was a plank of wood that was six feet long and nine inches wide. And I spotted the tree formation in the grain of the wood mm. before I even started it. So then I, I pulled that image out. So how do you get the, what do you use to make the print? Are you rubbing? Put the paper down and then apply pressure. You ink the the wood and then you put the paper down and yes, you apply pressure with actually a wooden spoon mm. on the back. Mm -hmm. So and sometimes a barren. 
Uh huh. And you pick the ink is lifted onto the paper that way. So six feet, that's a lot of rubbing. It was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and of course, you'd had to make sure it didn't slip and that it to get it down all in one piece and not have to pull it up again. Yes, I went through many variations before I would get the image that would work for each piece. And these are, you know, I would print them in different colors and then collage oh. them on, which is how I got all the variations in the colors of the wood. Mm -hmm. Well, I must say, any, every time you have a show, it's always a surprise because, you know, you're always doing something different, like materials and forms, and, you know, it's never never the same thing, which, yeah, yes. <laughs> which is nice. It's, it's fun for me. I can't do the same thing. I get bored. <laughs> <laughs> so the top piece is an encaustic. Um, which is wax and pig pigment on wood. And of course, what's lovely about the wax is you can get a lot of texture and a shine when you buff it. And um, that just really felt like reflections in water to me. It reminded me of Monet's lily pond. So art does art history infuse your thinking and process as you're like generating imagery like affinities it's all there it's in me um and i certainly look at different artists a lot um for example there's an artist i'm looking at now and i can't pronounce his name but he does works, he does drawings on paper using fireworks, which uh -huh. is where the idea, although it doesn't directly relate to what he did, but the burning of the paper certainly was reminiscent. And it, after I did it, I remembered, oh yes, this is something that informed my thinking on this. It's mm -hmm. not like, you know, I saw it and then I went and did it. Yeah, but me it's too. there. It's yeah. part of the funded information that's mm -hmm. in my head. These are um, called trace monotypes. And I can show you what I use to make the mark. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Trace monotypes. Another visual aid. This is the uh, drawing implement uh -huh. that was yes. used. So basically, you ink the plate, you put the paper down, and then wherever you press on the back, picks up the ink and deposits it on the paper. And that's how you get your image. So it's almost like blind drawing huh. uh, because it's very much, very similar to the frottage, which is, you know, a rubbing where you're making your image by rubbing. Well, this is, you know, you're making marks and it's picking up the ink. And yeah, all, of, all of these were done in that way. And you're also shaping the paper. I mean, it's not yeah. a yes. regular sheet. It's pieced uh, or torn. It's torn. I I experiment a lot with um, the different ways you can tear paper and the different type of edges you get from tearing paper differently. Um, so yes. So this is collaged onto an illustration board because I did tear out the shape. Oh. I'll work really small and tight, like with the wood cuts, uh, then I'll need to do something big and bold and freer. Right. So I, I go, I move back and forth between small and intimate and large and expressive. Mm -hmm.
And you'll be um, teaching a workshop. Yes, I look forward to it. Yes, I'll be showing a lot of this, these techniques in yeah. the workshop. So the it's a one-day workshop, and uh, so you're going to show various print techniques? and. Yes, I, I will be showing various print techniques and footage and bringing in different materials for the students to experiment with. And they'll be generating their own imagery? Right? Yes, they'll be generating their own collages, yes, based on uh, small prints that they make or small prints or drawings or potages that they make in the workshop. And I will bring them in just, I mean, we only have one day and this is such a vast <laughs> right. works on paper can be so many different things. Mm -hmm. So I will bring them in and see what interests them in the show and um try to focus more on what their interest is mm -hmm. in exploring as a starting point. Right. There's many directions. So, so <laughs> directions, yes. To, to focus. Well, it's a beautiful show. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. Well, I appreciate it. I and appreciate all the work you put in and hanging it. Oh, well, it's our pleasure. Okay. All right. Thanks again. You're <laughs> welcome. Good night.